Hey guys, I'm Ethan from GoBuilda, and today we're gonna to do a brief overview of our robot in three days for this year's First Tech Challenge season center stage. Our robot in three days is a live streamed event. We have about 15 hours of live streaming that takes place over three different days. The vast majority of building, aside from some small things like wiring, happens during those live streamed hours. They're a lot of fun to tune into, but the robots that we end up with are really the exciting part. This year, we had an FTC team, 7842, the brown coats, come in from Huntsville, Alabama. We had four students split up into two teams to build each robot. On the red team, we had Nathan and MJ, and on the blue team, we had David and Joel. Now, it created some funny dynamics because these are four students who are used to working together on one team. So a lot of our prototyping and a lot of the ideas discussion happened with both teams. And that's really the intent of Robot in Three Days. One isn't really competing against the other. We're trying to show ideas and really prove how cool you can make some robots for this season. The goal for Robot in Three Days isn't to give teams a complete solution. It's to have a bunch of cool ideas that you can implement and see what a robot for this season might look like. So let's take a look at the robot that the red team made. The first thing that they began prototyping after they talked about different styles of drivetrains and decided on mechanic wheels was their claw. Now they had tons of different claw prototypes and a lot of them were really cool, but I'm really excited about the one they landed on. Let's turn this robot around so you can see what it looks like. My favorite part about this claw is the fact that you have two independent servos that can each grab a pixel. So you can load two pixels into the claw side by side, which means you can score them at the same time. And you have independent control over releasing one side and then the other side. This means you can score one and then move if you're trying to get a mosaic or release both at the same time for a really quick deposit. This claw system uses two GoBuilda servos and these rubber track feet on flat beams. This whole claw pivots to give you some pan on a torque servo on a compact servo block. The claws need to be folded up for the arm to go down. Now this claw is fed by an intake system. The intake system has two stages, a first 72 millimeter boot wheel intake stage and a 96 millimeter boot wheel intake stage. So this allows you to reach into the corners and pull elements out of the corners that the width of this robot wouldn't allow you to get in otherwise. This is nice because it means you don't have to have a separate system for it. You can just reach out there, grab it, and pull it right into the claw. This intake system is cool because it feeds right into the claw. This claw could totally pick up objects right off the ground, but the intake system gives it a little bit more speed in grabbing and pulling those elements in. The biggest challenge that a lot of teams face when designing active intakes is getting those elements up off the ground. And in some robots, you can totally get away with just having your active intake move that element into the robot while having it still be on the tile floor. The servo claw is mounted to an arm. Now this is a virtual four bar linkage system driven by a 188 to one motor with a two to one bevel gear set. So it's got tons of torque. Really what we were after is a slow enough speed that this arm is controllable. Now, instead of being a one to one ratio on that virtual four bar, it's a two to one. That means that this bar, the second link in the system rotates faster than the first link and kind of comes out of the robot at an angle. This is honestly a pretty sweet system for this year's game because it extends out as about as high as you need it to it folds in pretty compact and is surprisingly stiff. You really don't need a storing mechanism that's got a ton more rigidity than this. It can be pretty quick. Um, and a cool part about arm-based lifts like this is that they're significantly easier to counterspring. We really don't need to with the amount of torque we have, but with some really good control loops, I could see running this arm a little bit faster. The other really cool part about Red Robot is that they're able to hang in endgame. This is the only of the two robots that was able to tackle that end game objective. And I think the way they implemented it was really clever. They have a servo that drives a scissor lift. That scissor lift can extend up with the servo's driving force and deploy this hook mechanism. In this case, um, a standard go build apart. As you drive the servo up, you can drive the robot into the bar and drive the servo on the scissor lift up to release the claw. Now they didn't quite get to this idea on the stream, but magnets are definitely the way to do this. 
they're a really solid way to attach and detach something in this manner, and you can really fine tune the amount of force that you want. Now this is all pulled by some 550 pound paracord that is attached to a winch. That winch allows you to pull the robot up by driving the winch and hang off of that bar. I like this method for a few reasons. The big one is it means your scoring lift doesn't have to be strong or torquey enough to lift your robot because scoring lifts should be lighter and faster. Now I do like having a separate mechanism to deploy the hook. It is very tempting to put it on your scoring lift and that's totally reasonable, but you've got to make sure that this cord doesn't come off of the spool for the winch. So keeping it on a separate mechanism that can wait until end game to deploy is really handy and I like that method a lot. To fit in the 18 inch cube, this robot's intake folds up and you can orient the boot wheels to find the set that has been cut up. That means you're tucked in nice and close to the 18 inches. This robot is on a standard size strafer, so it's pretty close in X and Y, and the height, like I mentioned, is just under 14 inches. Now, let's go ahead over and talk about the Blue Team's robot. The Blue Team, like the Red Team, started with a claw, but we're gonna get to that in a second. The first thing that the Pixel sees when it encounters the Blue Team's robot is their intake system. Now, you'll notice they have a pretty similar fold-out intake keeps it up inside the 18 inch box to start and drops down so that they can reach into those corners like the red team. That feels like a big priority for both teams this year. This intake system, instead of feeding it directly into the claw, has an intermediary transfer system. The intake wheels feed it up where the pixel encounters a roller. This roller is driven by a super speed servo and is overdriven, so it's got plenty of speed. That roller kicks the pixel up into the robot and pushes it into this next stage, which has 48 millimeter boot wheels. Those boot wheels travel and pull the pixel up into the claw bucket system. Now this bucket system is able to take the pixel and have it drop right down into a very nicely designed space for the pixel to sit. Let's run that again but we'll keep the lift up. So you start, your uh, pixel is in the boot wheel assembly, it gets kicked out and falls right down into this little cubby. Now, the lift then can go down or it will stay down. The servos will close and the claw has a, a pretty good hold of the pixel. I like this because it keeps a lot of the weight of the robot in the transfer system and leaves the scoring mechanism pretty simple and lightweight. It's just a couple servos and some structure and a couple of beams and some shafts to hold these eight Rex intake rollers. Now the second pixel you would store in the transfer system. So you'd intake one, put it in the bucket, grab it with a claw, intake your second pixel, hold it there, and then you'd go score the first lower your lift back down, grab the second pixel, and score it. So it isn't quite as fast as depositing as the red team's deposit is. Their claw is a little more complex and gets that advantage of being able to score both at once or one, in, one at a time where the blue team's robot needs to move the lift every time they want to score. Speaking of the lift, the blue team is using two belt-driven 240 millimeter Viper slide kits. This 240 millimeters in the angle that they have them mounted at means they can go under even the bridge, which helps them a lot because they can just sneak under anywhere in the field. It's really fun to drive this robot because you have these big structures, but you can just go right through them. Each of these slides is driven by a 435 RPM motor and they each have the belts so that everything stays nice and rigid. They're connected by a piece of low side channel and the claw is mounted right to that low side channel. The blue team started with a strafer as well, but they made more modifications. First, the two front motors are now vertical. This helps them make their robot shorter, but it also helps move the center of gravity forward so that when the lift is all the way extended, there is not quite as, it doesn't move the center of gravity quite as far back. When you collapse the lift, everything stays pretty nice and short in the robot. The back two wheels are still in the channel, which is now shorter, and the crossbar is now narrower. 
Both of these robots could benefit a ton from some refinement. That's a thing that we don't get a lot of time for in the robot in three days format, and that's what really makes those excellent teams shine. The biggest thing that you'll notice with the Blue Alliance robot is that their intake system, once you get it into the robot, is fairly unconstrained. The pixel can kind of fly everywhere. Adding some barriers that hold the pixel where it should be to get from the intake to the transfer system would help this robot a ton and would move it from something that could do pretty okay to something that I think could be really darn good. I love the Red Team's robots hang, but it's kind of a one shot. If you miss the putting the hook on the bar, that's it. Those are your chances to hang. So I love the winch system, but I think that it could help to fix that and give yourself potentially one or two more chances to make sure you have everything locked in and to not lose the chance to get those 30 points in endgame. The Red Alliance's robot's intake is also fairly unconstrained, so adding some more barriers that funnel the objects directly into the claw would help it as well. I'm really excited with how both of these robots turned out. Robot in Three Days was a ton of fun, and a huge thank you to 7842 The Brown Coats for coming up all the way from Huntsville to have a fun weekend with us. We'll see you guys next time.